once again, we are on the first method in finding the solution of a non-homogeneous higher order differential equation. And that method is the method of undetermined coefficient. At the end of this video presentation, so we are expected to identify the trial particular solution of non-homogeneous differential equation. And then to find as well the complementary function and any particular solution yp so which would comprise the uh, general solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation so to start with so let's go back with the definition of non-homogeneous differential equation so the higher order li linear differential equation is said to be non-homogeneous if a of x, y double prime plus b of x, y prime plus c of x, y is equals to d of x, wherein uh, d of x is not equal to zero, then that is classified as a non-homogeneous differential equation. So this is the only difference of non-homogeneous with homogeneous, the presence of the g of x, which is not equal to zero. So in finding the solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation, so it is a combination of the complementary function plus the particular uh, functions. So the complementary solution of the differential equation is similar with that of the homogeneous equation. So by the way, as you can see here, the difference of the non-homogeneous to homogeneous is just the presence of the d of x. So in in finding the solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation so we could start by finding the solution of the homogeneous part of the equation and that would correspond to the y of c or the complementary solution and then after considering or after getting the complementary function then that is the time to determine the trial particular solution and for us to get the y sub p or the particular solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation. So how do we do that? Uh, in getting the particular solution, so we have to determine the trial uh, solution first. Okay, so we have a table uh, for that. So these are the methods in uh, of undetermined coefficient. So the first thing is we have to find the complementary function. So which is just the same way in finding the uh, solution of a homogeneous equation. And then we have to determine the particular solution. So in determining the particular solution, so we will be using a table. So which the method of undetermined coefficient is limited to certain functions, so such as algebraic functions, exponential, and sine and cosine functions. Uh, in finding the uh, particular solution y of p so we have to determine first so what will be the corresponding trial particular solution so for the g of x of the uh, non-homogeneous differential equation so if the g of x is a constant so the trial solution so would just be equal to a okay? so a so would be the numerical coefficient or the coefficient uh, that we will be finding so to determine the particular solution of the given equation so if the g of x so would be 5x plus 7 so we are looking at the highest degree of the algebraic function and then from there so that would be our trial particular solution starting from the highest degree and then there would be a gradual decrease so until it, be it becomes constant so for example, if we have 5x plus 7, so that would become ax plus b. And next, we have 3x squared minus 2. As you can see on this uh, given uh, g of x, so we don't have a term so which involves x. However, for our trial solution, so there is a b of x here. So in a trial solution, so all of the terms should be complete. Okay? So from x squared, x up to the constant. So the same is true with number 4. So we don't have the x squared, but that is present on our trial particular solution, so which is the bx squared. So when we are talking about sine and cosine, uh, we 
always have a combination of the sine and cosine on the trial particular solution. So if we have sine 4x, so we will be having a cosine 4x plus b sine 4x. So similarly, if it is just a cosine, and then it, it will always be a combination of the cosine and sine as well. Uh, the next one, we have the exponential function. So exponential function is similar with algebraic functions. We are just going to attach a numerical coefficient or a coefficient uh, for our exponential functions. And then if it is a product of an exponential function and algebraic function, so we will just be uh, attaching the corresponding particular solution for the, uh, for the algebraic function and then multiplied it with our exponential function. So in this case, if we have 9x minus 2, so that would just be ax plus b multiplied with the exponential function e raised to 5x. In number 9, so if we have a product of an algebraic function whose, higher, whose degree would be 2, so it would be a product of the algebraic function and the exponential function, but again, so similar on what we did before, so there would be uh, a complete term uh, for uh, the trial particular solution. So that would be ax squared plus bx plus c. So if it is a product of exponential function and sine, so the same is true as what we've done before. So there should be a presence of the sine function as well as the cosine function. So together with the coefficient a and b. So if it is a product of an algebraic function and a sign, uh, that's the same as true. So we have to have the ax squared plus bx plus c uh, multiplied with the cosine and same as true multiplied it with the sign. And lastly, if it's a product of 3, then that would just be a trial solution. So involving the algebraic function, the exponential and the cosine, so plus the corresponding sine function. So those are all the uh, common trial particular solution that if our g of x so would resemble uh, the following uh, g of x, then we could use the methods of undetermined coefficient. So let's say that would be for algebraic functions, for exponential as, for, as well as for sine and cosine. So other than that, uh, we could derive one, uh, but uh, if we really want to solve uh, non-homogeneous functions, so which is other than those specified on this table, and then we could have the variation of parameters, so which is a bit longer as compared to this one. So solving our first example, so we are to find the general solution of the given differential equation, y double prime minus y prime plus y is equals to 2 sine 3x. And our first step in solving a non-homogeneous differential equation is to find the complementary function. So it says here that the general solution that the general solution is equal to the complementary function or the complementary solution plus the particular solution yp. So our first task is to determine the complementary function. So the complementary function uses the same method for a homogeneous equation. So our step here is to transform our uh, homogeneous part of the equation into its equivalent uh, algebraic equation. So y double prime becomes m squared and then minus m plus 1 would be equal to 0. And from here, uh, the only factor of 1 is 1 and 1. So it won't be able to get uh, the middle term of negative 1. So I think so. this one could be uh, solved. So using uh, our quadratic formula. So we're in uh, our A here is 1. So B is negative 1. And then C is positive 1. So using the quadratic formula, I'll have negative B. So negative of negative 1, so plus and minus the square root of b squared. So negative 1 squared, so minus 4 times 1, a times c is 1 as well. And then divide it with 2a, so 2 times 1. So leading to m to be equivalent to 1 plus or minus. And then we have 1 squared, uh, it's 1. 
minus 3, so we'll have, or minus 4, so we'll have negative 3. So the square root of negative 3, and then divide it with 2. So in thus, uh, giving us m to be equivalent to uh, 1 plus n minus uh, the square root of 3i, and then divide it with 2. So as we can see here, so m then would be 1 half, then plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2i. So we can see here that our alpha is positive 1 half, and then our beta would be the square root of 3 divided with 2. So giving us our complementary solution, so y of c, so y of c then so would be equivalent to c1 e raised to alpha which is one half so this would be in terms of x so one half x uh, and then cosine beta so which is square root of three all over two x and then plus c2 e raised to one half x this time it would become sine square root of three all over two x so that would be our complementary solution so the next one is we are to find okay so we are to find our particular solution so to get our particular solution so y of p so we need to determine our trial function so our, our trial solution here so our g of x is 2 sine 3x so therefore our trial solution would be a uh, cosine 3x and uh, b sine 3x so using the table that we had discussed before uh, for sine it would be a combination of cosine and sine so that would be our y p y sub p and uh, so to get the values of a and b so our task here is it is already our solution. So we, we just need to find what's the value of A and what is the value of B. So to determine that, so we will be using our original equation. Uh, it involves the second derivative. So we will be finding the second derivative of the given uh, trial function. So that will be, so Y... Uh, yp prime then so would be equivalent to uh, a cosine 3x so derivative of cosine is negative and then we have uh, 3x so derivative of that would be 3 so that would give us a negative 3a and then sine 3x and similarly so we have for b uh, sine 3x so derivative of sine is cosine However, we have 3x there, so plus 3b cosine 3x. Next thing is we need to find the second derivative. So since our differential equation involves an order 2, uh, sine 3x, so derivative of sine would be cosine. However, we have 3, so that would give us a negative 9a cosine 3x. And the same is true with... Uh, 3b cosine 3x so that would give us a cosine would be a negative sine so a negative 9b and then that would be sine 3x so now that we have all of those things so we will be substituting it to our original differential equation so let me rewrite it so y double prime minus y prime plus y would be equal to 2 sine 3x so 2 sine 3x so substituting everything so we will be having so for y double prime we have negative 9a cosine uh, 3x then minus 9b sine 3x and afterward we have the negative y prime so a negative and a negative so that would give us a positive 3a sine 3x and then a negative 3b cosine 3x 
And lastly, we have the plus y. So plus a cosine 3x and then plus b sine 3x. And that would be equal to 2 sine 3x. So from here, so we can now combine everything that involves cosine. So that would give us a negative, or we could factor out cosine 3x. So negative 9a. And then we have negative 3b. And then plus a. So all of this would be multiplied it with cosine 3x. And then for sine b, so I'll have plus negative 9b plus 3a and then we'll have another sign so plus b so sign uh, 3x so it would be equal to 2 sign 3x so we could simplify this further so to be equivalent to uh, negative uh, 8a minus 3b so cosine 3x and then plus negative uh, 8b plus 3a sine 3x would be equal to 2 sine 3x Okay, so this time, so once uh, we were able to simplify it, so we're just going to equate, so we're just going to equate uh, for uh, those terms so that involves cosine 3x. So for those terms that involves cosine 3x, so we'll have on the left-hand side, that is uh, negative uh, 8a minus 3b, and then we don't have cosine on the right hand side so that would make it zero and then for those uh, that involve sine 3x so we'll have I'll start with a so 3a and then minus 8b so this time around so we have the coefficient of sine 3x which is 2 so that would be equal to 2 so this time around we already have our two equations uh, to make our uh, solution faster, so we're just going to use the calculator so to solve simultaneous equation. So in this case, so we have two uh, unknowns. So we'll have negative 8 and negative 3, then a 0. And then we have a positive 3 and negative 8 and a positive 2 so yielding to a value of a so which is 6 over 73 and then a b so which is negative 16 all over 73 and thus so giving us our particular solution so yp here is a cosine 3x plus b sine 3x so that would be 6 over 73 uh, cosine 3x and then minus 16 over 73 sine 3x. So now that we have our y sub p and y sub c, so we could combine so to form our general solution to be equivalent to uh, c1 then e raised to 1 half x and then cosine the square root of 3 all over 2x plus c2 e raised to 1 half x sine square root of 3 all over 2x and then that would comprise our complementary function okay so that's correct and then we'll just add our a particular solution so 6 over 73 cosine 3x and then minus 16 over 73 sine 
3x. So, forming our uh, general solution to be like this. Let's have our second example. So, we are to find the general solution of the given differential equation. So, which is y double prime minus 8y prime plus 16y is equals to 2e raised to 4x. And similar uh, with what we did on the first example, so we are to find the complementary solution first. And to find that one, so we will be transforming the differential equation into its equivalent algebraic equation. So y double prime, so becomes m squared minus 8m and then plus 16. And that would be equal to 0. Uh, m squared minus 8m plus 16 is factorable. Uh, and that would be an m and m. So 16 would be a 4 and a 4. So to get a negative 8m, so we'll have a negative 4 and a negative 4 there. So it only follows then that m sub 1 would be equal to m sub 2. And that is equal to 4. So now that we were able to take the uh, roots of the given equation so we can now or uh, this time around so it falls under case uh, case two so this would be a repeated roots so therefore y of c then so would be equivalent to c1 e raised to 4x and then plus so since this is a repeated roots i'm i'm going to incorporate x and then e raised to 4x so that would be our y of c. So this time around, so let's proceed with our uh, trial solution. So our g of x suggests that that would be 2 e raised to 4x. And supposedly, our y of p so should be a e raised to 4x. So that should be our trial solution. However, in uh, methods of undetermined coefficient, so we have to make sure that our trial solution so should, ne uh, should not be the same with that of our complementary solution. So if it resembles the same thing, so it would make the solution linearly dependent with each other. So they would cancel out in the end. So that is why uh, this one actually falls under the case 2 for methods of undetermined coefficient. So what we will be doing is we will be multiplying x uh, until such time that our trial solution will not resemble any of the solution on, on our complementary uh, solution. So instead of using uh, a uh, e raised to 4x, so the first thing that we will be doing is I'm going to multiply it with x. So that would make it a x e raised to 4x however if i would be using x e raised to 4x so that would resemble the second solution this time so which is not allowed as well so instead of just multiplying x i will be multiplying x squared so that would be a x squared e raised to 4x and that would be our trial solution so for this uh, particular example okay so take note of this that the trial solution should not resemble any of the solution uh, or, uh, which belongs to our uh, complementary function so again so to determine the value of a so we will be uh, deriving it two times so since our equation is a second order differential equation so yp prime then so would be using product rule so ax squared and then derivative of e raised to 4x would be 4 e raised to 4x then plus derivative of x squared would be 2x so that would give us 2a x e raised to 4x so for our second derivative uh, so 4 uh, times 4, I'll have 16 ax squared e raised to 4x. Then derivative of x squared is 2x. So 2 times 4 will have plus 8 ax e raised to 4x. 
Then for 2ax e raised to 4x, so it's derivative. So derivative of e raised to 4x is 4 times 2a. So I'll have 8ax e raised to 4x. And lastly, derivative of x is just 1. So 2a e raised to 4x. So we can combine the two. So yp double prime. So it would be 16ax squared e raised to 4x plus 8a plus 8a is 16ax e raised to 4x then plus 2a e raised to 4x. So rewriting our original equation. So y double prime minus 8y prime plus 16y is equals to 2e raised to 4x. So 2e raised to 4x. Okay. So substituting uh, for the second derivative, so that would be 16ax squared e raised to 4x plus 16ax e raised to 4x plus 2a e raised to 4x. And I have negative 8 multiplied it with y prime. So negative 8 times 4, we have negative 32ax squared e raised to 4x. And then a negative 8 times 2 will have negative 16 uh, a x e raised to 4 x. And lastly, so plus 16 times y, so a x squared e raised to 4 x. That would be equal to 2 e raised to 4 x. So combining all uh, similar terms, so we have 16ax, so this one, plus 16 would be 32, and then minus 32, so that would cancel those out. And then we have those that involve uh, x, so 16ax minus 16ax, so that would cancel out as well. So leaving us to have, so 2a e raised to 4x, is equals to 2e raised to 4x. So therefore, equating those terms, so which involves e raised to 4x, so that would be 2a would be equal to 2. So giving us a to be equivalent to 1. And thus, our particular solution then would be equal to a uh, x squared e raised to 4x or that would be x squared e raised to 4x for our yp. And lastly, so our uh, general solution then, so would be c1 e raised to 4x plus c2 x e raised to 4x then plus x squared e raised to 4x. And that would be the general solution of this particular example. So let's have another one. Example number three. So we are to find the general solution again, but this time around the one on the right side is an algebraic function. So, so again, we're going to get the complementary solution. So m squared plus m and then minus 6 would be equal to 0. So a factor of 6 is a 3 and a 2. Okay, so we could get uh, the middle term here. So an M and an M. Then we have a 3 and a 2. So that would 6. Uh, 3 would be positive and then 2 would be negative. So to yield a positive M in the middle term so giving us m1 so to be equivalent to negative 3 and m2 to be equivalent to 2 so from here so we can write our complementary uh, function or solution so to be this is case 1 distinct roots so c1 e raised to negative 3 x and then plus c2 e raised to 2 x so our task this time is to find the particular solution of 2x plus 3. So our trial solution here so would be ax plus b. 
uh, on our complementary solution, so there is no term that involves only x as well as a term, so which only involves uh, constant. So therefore, uh, this is case one. So we just proceed with uh, the derivative. So find the first derivative. So ax plus b, so it would just be a. And then the second derivative, so it would be 0. So y double prime plus y prime minus 6y is equals to 2x plus 3. So y double prime is 0. y prime is a. And then minus y, so it would be uh, negative 6 times ax, so negative 6ax. And then negative 6 times b, so we'll have negative 6b. That would be equal to 2x plus 3. So from here, uh, we can now equate those terms, so which involves x. So the numerical coefficient of those that involves x would be negative 6a. Uh, and that would be equal to 2. So therefore, a is actually equal to negative 2 over 6 or negative 1 third. And then for those which involves constant, so we have a minus 6b, so would be equal to 3. Then we are to find what is uh, b. So b then... So, would be equal to a minus 3, okay, a minus 3 all over 6, where in a is negative 1 third. So, negative 1 third minus 3, so divide it with 6. So, giving us, so the value of b to be equivalent to negative, 1 over 3 then minus 3 which is negative 10 over 3 divide it with 6 that is negative 5 over 9 so for the value of B and that's our particular solution so which is AX plus B so AX plus B and a is negative one third, so negative one third x, and then b is negative five over nine. So forming our general solution, so our y of c is c one e raised to negative three x plus c two e raised to two x, and then minus one third x minus five over 9. Okay, so that would uh, give us our final solution. So to be like this. So next, let's have another example. So this time around, these are a bit simple as compared to the first two that we had. Uh, so y double prime minus 4y prime plus 12y is equals to 3 e raised to 5. So for the complementary solution, so we have m squared minus 4m and then plus 12. And that would be equal to 0. So is this factorable? So for a 12, so we have a 6 and a 2. Uh, so M and an M, so a 6 and a 2. But if I'll have a 6 and a 2, so that would be a negative 6 and a positive 2. But that would not get a positive 12. Uh, So how do we, is this factorable, how about a 4 and a 3? 
So, 4 and a 3 is not possible as well. So, if we're going to use a quadratic equation, so that would be a 1, a negative 4, and a 12. Okay, so let us answer this one. So it's not factorable. Uh, A then would be 1. So B is negative 4. And then C is positive 12. And uh, using the uh, quadratic equation, so we'll have a negative and a negative 4. Then plus and minus the square root of B squared. Squared. So we have negative 4 squared uh, minus 4 times 1 times 12 divided with 2 times 1. So M then would be equal to uh, positive 2 then plus and minus the square root of so, 16 minus uh, 48. So, we'll have negative 32. So, negative 32 all over 2. So, sorry, that would be 4. Next, M then would be equal to a negative 32. So, we'll have a 4 and an 8. So, square root of 32 is the same as a 4 square root of 2. So, 4 plus and minus 4 square root of 2 times i divided with 2. So, finally, m would be 2 plus and minus 2 the square root of 2, i. So, our alpha would be 2, then our beta would be 2 square root of 2. And thus, our complementary solution so would be... C1 e raised to 2x cosine 2 the square root of 2 uh, x and then plus C2 e raised to 2x sine 2 the square root of 2 x. So that is our complementary solution. And next, so let us have our particular solution. So 3 e raised to 5t. So yp then would be a e raised to 5t and it does not resemble any of the terms involving or the solution involving our complementary function so we could proceed with our first derivative okay so the second so we'll just have uh, 5a uh, e raised to 5t then yp double prime would be 25a e raised to 5t. So our original equation, so y double prime minus uh, 4y, 4y prime and then plus 12y is equals to 3e e raised to 5t. So, 3e e raised to 5t. So, substituting. So, 25a uh, e raised to 5t. Then, minus 4 times 5. So, 4 uh, times 5. So, we'll have 20a e raised to 5t. Then, 12. So, plus 12a uh, e raised to 5t would be equal to 3 e raised to 5t. So that would be 25 minus 20 is 5. And then plus 12. So that would give us 17. So 17a e raised to 5t is equals to 3 e raised to 5t. And then for those terms, so we only have the same term. So which involves e raised to 5t, that would be 17a is equal to 3. And thus, A is equals to 3 over 17. 
So, given that our y p is equals to a e raised to 5t, so therefore, our particular solution would be 3 over 17 e raised to 5t. And thus, our uh, general solution so would be c1 e raised to 2x um, cosine 2 square root of 2x plus c2 e raised to 2x sine 2 square root of 2x and then that would be uh, plus so 3 over 17 e raised to 5t and that would be our general solution okay, so that would be our general solution So let's have our last example, uh, which involves an algebraic function again. Uh, let's have m squared minus 2m and then minus 3 is equal to 0. So if I'll have a negative 3 and a positive 1, so that would do. So, m and an m, a 3 and a 1. So, negative 3 and a positive 1. So, we'll have a negative 3. Negative 3 plus m is negative 2m. Okay? So, therefore, our first root is positive 3. The second root is negative 1. So, our complementary solution then would be c1 e raised to 3x plus c2 e raised to negative x. And then our uh, g of x is 9x squared plus 1. So therefore, our trial solution so which will involve ax squared plus bx and plus c. So yp prime then would be 2ax plus b. And our yp double prime so would just be 2a. So we have y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y is equals to 9x squared plus 1. So we are to find the values of a, b, and c. So y double prime is 2a minus 2y uh, prime. So negative 2 times 2a, so negative 4ax, and then minus 2b. A negative 3, so I'll have a negative 3ax squared minus 3b, then minus c. And that would be equal to 9x squared plus 1. Uh, so if you we'll arrange this one, so we'll start with negative 3ax squared. So, followed by the combination of the terms, okay, so involving x. I think something is missing here. So, this should be negative 3bx, okay, so negative 3bx and then minus 3c, okay, so minus 3c. Okay, so negative 3ax squared minus 3bx minus 3c. And next, we have the uh, those terms, so which involves uh, x. So we'll have, so plus the negative 4a uh, and then minus 3b. And then we'll have x. And lastly, so we have plus 2a minus 2b minus 3c. So it would be equal to 9x squared plus 1. So we can now equate those terms so involving x squared. And that would be negative 3a. And then that would be equal to... 9 and that's a 
is equal to so 9 divides negative 3 so we'll have negative 3 so for a and those terms so that involves x so we have negative 4a minus 3b so would be equal to 0 and uh, b then so negative 4 times negative 3 so minus 3b so would be equal to 0 so this would be uh, 12 is equals to 3b so therefore b would be equivalent to 4 so. and lastly so for constant have 2a minus 2b minus 3c and that would be equal to 1 and uh, substituting the taken value so 2a is negative 3 minus 2b is 4 minus 3c would be equal to 1 so negative 6 minus 8 so we have negative 14 minus 3c would be equal to 1 so negative 3c would be 14 plus 1 we have 15 so therefore c is equal to negative 5 and that's if our y p or our particular solution is ax squared plus bx plus c so then y p would be a is negative 3 x squared b is plus 4 uh, x and lastly we'll have minus 5 so for our y sub p and lastly so our uh, general solution y of c then so would be equal to c1 e raised to 3x plus c2 e raised to negative x minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 and that will leave us to our general solution and that would be our last example so for this method so again so thank you for uh, viewing the video presentation